website vulnerabilities and attacks are becoming more and more common as hackers become increasingly sophisticated in their methods of breaking into websites. So, it is fair to say some, far too many in fact, fall through the security gaps and become insecure. In this video, I'm going to dive deep into the 7 most common website vulnerabilities and attacks that you need to be aware of. You'll learn how these attacks work and, most importantly, how to defend against them. Don't let your website become an easy target for hackers. Join me as we unravel the world of website security. To keep things concise and non-technical, I will refrain from delving into too many details. The first vulnerabilities, man in the middle attacks. Man in the middle attacks are frequently used when websites have not encrypted their data and leaving it vulnerable in plain text. These types of attacks are often employed in ransomware attacks, where attackers exploit the lack of encryption to steal and encrypt data for profit. Attackers specifically target websites that possess easily accessible personally identifiable information, whether it be data at rest or in transit. The consequences can be severe, as the stolen data usually violates privacy regulations, especially when personally identifiable information is compromised. One effective method to safeguard against and minimize man-in-the-middle attacks is by ensuring the presence of valid SSL, TLS certificates on websites. While this may seem simple enough, countless companies have demonstrated repeated failures in implementing proper security measures, even major players like Microsoft, resulting in devastating outcomes. The second vulnerability is third-party code. Most websites utilities content from third parties. It is the website owner's responsibility to ensure all third-party code used to make up all their singing, all dancing website is in fact secure. By way of example, last year the Canadian government suffered a hack which included their tax offices. When researchers started researching, it was not too long before they discovered that the flag that was being used by all this government's websites was written in code that put the government websites in a highly vulnerable position. No one had checked that, and insecure government websites had been published and were being maintained as not secure. Unfortunately, the Canadian government had already been breached and, in typical fashion, only bothered to check after the event. The root cause of the breach was down to third-party code that caused the entire domain to be exposed, vulnerable, and exploitable. To mitigate the risk of third-party code making websites insecure, website owners, developers and infosec leads must ensure all plugins are up-to-date and plugins such as WordPress as well as others are also up-to-date. The third is Brute Force Attacks One of the worst vulnerabilities we witness is when we uncover not secure login domains that are using obsolete SSL, TLS which renders the website wide open to abuse. A brute force attack is a straightforward method for accessing login credentials to gain access, typically gain certain privileges, and ultimately gain digital trust. If an assailant is using social engineering, it is usually quite easy to guess passwords and gain access, which can then be used for further infiltration. The best way of protecting login information is to ensure the website is using a valid SSL, TLS certificate and also by using two-factor authentication. Site owners have responsibilities to control this and their users. The fourth vulnerability is Distributed Denial of Service Distributed denial of service attacks are typically attacks that render a website unavailable and offline temporarily, sometimes permanently. By overwhelming the website's servers with requests, and therefore the site is unavailable for legitimate users, hence the term denial of service. Botnets are usually used to bombard the servers with requests utilizing infected computers. It is also quite common for DDoS attacks to distract security systems whilst exploiting other vulnerabilities. One of the most popular methods to mitigate a DDoS attack is to use a CDN. A load balancer and scalable resources are also worthy additions. A WAF should also be utilized to prevent a DDoS masking other attacks such as the injection of XSS. The next vulnerability, cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting attacks are one of the most if not the most, common attacks, accounting for around 40% of all attacks. XSS attacks are not overly sophisticated however frequently used by many cyber attackers, typically using scripts that others have developed and that are readily available on the dark web cross-site scripting targets users of websites instead of the website application itself. Code is inserted into vulnerable or insecure websites and then executed by unsuspecting visitors. The code can compromise the user's accounts, activate trojans, or modify the website's content to trick users into providing additional information and personally identifiable information. The best way to defend against XSS is to use a web application firewall. A WAF acts as a filter that can identify and block malicious requests to a website. The sixth vulnerability is Cookies 
Cookies in the first instance can be harmless and were originally used to ensure the user experience was smooth and did not require repetitive logins and data repetition. However, cyber criminals can also use cookies for many nefarious activities such as making a website appear to be unavailable to users or inserting a cookie for data capture. When returning to a website, users are sent a cookie back to the web browser. A cyber criminal can alter that cookie in many ways and plant cookies as they wish, especially if there is a security issue. If the number of cookies is exceeded, a website can become unavailable until the cookies are deleted. The law on the use of cookies is constantly a bone of contention, and cookies are used by companies to track web browsing history and activity. It is always best to opt out of cookies when given the option. It is possible, although a pain for those just wanting a website service, to see exactly what the cookies are used for, and there are, as I mentioned, calls to limit the tracking and activity of users as part of a wider privacy drive. On some sites, it has become annoyingly complex to opt out of cookies and to trawl through that option as opposed to accept all. This is nothing more than a marketing ploy and should, wherever possible, be avoided. The last is phishing. Phishing attacks are a type of cyber attack that involves the use of fraudulent emails or websites to trick individuals into divulging sensitive information such as passwords, credit card numbers, or other personal data. These attacks are often carried out by cyber criminals who use sophisticated techniques to create convincing replicas of legitimate websites or emails in order to deceive unsuspecting victims. It is important for individuals and organizations to be aware of the risks associated with phishing attacks and to take steps to protect themselves against these threats. This may include implementing strong security measures, educating employees and customers about the dangers of phishing, and regularly monitoring for suspicious activity. Avoidance of phishing attacks can be down to internal organizations' training and diligence. However, insecure domain name systems can be used to gain backdoor access and take over servers as was, we believe, the case above. Thank you for watching this video on common vulnerabilities and attacks. There are a lot of ways to hack websites, but those are the most important ways. I hope you learned something new and useful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more cybersecurity content. In the next video, we will cover some of the best practices and tools to protect yourself and your systems from these threats. Stay tuned and stay safe. See you next time. Yeah.